Think Like a Monk is the book which will inspire you to take control of your mind and give you tools to train your mind for approaching life in a different way. A way of detachment, rediscovery, purpose, focus, discipline and service. Jashoti says, adopting the monk mindset is not just possible, it is necessary. We have no other choice. We must find calmness, stillness and peace. You don't need to become a monk, but you must think like monks. And why should we think like monks? If you want to learn basketball, you might turn to Michael Jordan. If you want to innovate, you might look up to Elon Musk. But if you want to train your mind to find peace, calm and purpose, monks are the experts. This book is separated into three stages of adopting the monk mindset. First, let go of the external influence, internal obstacles and fears that hold you back. Then second, grow yourself. Reshape your life so that you can make better decisions with right intentions, purpose and confidence. And then finally, the giving and sharing our sense of gratitude and deepening our relationships with others. First step is let go of your false identity. These days we have no idea who we are, what we value, who we want to become and how we want to serve. Our identity has become like a mirror covered in a dust. The influence of external circumstances has obscured our vision from knowing who we are and what we truly value. We decide our goals based on commercials we watch, celebrities we follow and surroundings in which we live. Author explains, cleaning your mirror is the first step. This will not be a pleasant experience, but once you remove this dust of external noise, you will be able to see your true reflection and you will be able to see who you truly are. To remove the noise, first we need to identify the noise. For this, author gives us an easy tool, self-audit. Audit yourself in the following three categories, time, media and money. Spend a week tracking how much time you devote for your family, friends, health and yourself. The areas where you spend the most time should match what you value the most. Next, assess your media, how you are using your phone, who you follow on social media, whose advices is affecting you most, whose values are you accepting. Then take a look at the money you spend, what gadgets are you purchasing, what kind of food, clothes, classes and gathering you pay for. This will make you aware about your current decision making process and values. To uncover your true values, author encourages self-isolation because dealing with external noise drains lots of energy. So spend time with yourself like solo traveling, meditating, volunteering or just hiking in jungles. When you give yourself space and stillness, you can clear the dust and see yourself not through other eyes but from within. Doing a self audit tells you the values that you're living your life by default and self isolation tells you what values you want to choose to live by. Once you know your values, make your daily choices aligned with them. Values are also of two types, higher values and lower values. Making the choices based on higher values elevate us toward happiness, fulfillment, success and a deep sense of meaning in life. Higher values are such as fearlessness, gratitude, service and charity, acceptance, non-violence, truthfulness, compassion toward all living beings, satisfaction, kindness and integrity. And there are six lower values as well. Greed, lust, anger, ego, illusion and envy. Lower values demote us toward anxiety, depression and suffering. For the next week, whenever you spend money on a non-necessity or make a plan for how you will spend your free time, pause and think what is the value behind this choice. It only takes a second, a flash of consideration. Ideally, this momentary pause becomes instinctive so that you are making conscious choices about what matters to you and how much energy you devote to it. Once you filter out the noise of opinions, expectations and obligations, you will see the world through different eyes. Next step is let go of negativity. You can create a positive energy environment in your life following a simple triple S formula. Step 1. Creating the right sights. Do you know 80% of people see their phones as the first thing in morning? This is the best way to lose control of your life. Replace this habit by seeing a quote you love or a work of art that inspires you. Maybe a picture of your family or a natural scene. Making these things the first thing to see in the morning help you pause and think. And it also serves as a good reminder for a great life. Step 2. Scents. 
Use pleasant smells like lavender or eucalyptus. These scents will help you in creating a positive environment which promotes relaxation and protects you against negativity. Step 3 Sounds Research shows irrelevant sounds increases the cognitive load and make you feel exhausted for no real reason. Be conscious to create an environment where you are intentionally creating a positive sounds. For example, you could choose music that uplifts you or some mantras that gives you energy. Always remember negativity is contagious. Doesn't matter how much you read or learn about these great things, but if you are living with negative people, you will get affected by it. And we all know people in our life who are always comparing, criticizing and complaining. The best solution is avoid them as much as possible. But there will be situations when you cannot avoid these people. For example, your office colleague or your family members. For them, use a simple 75-25 rule, which means for every negative person in your life, have at least 3 uplifting people. Another strategy is allocate time for such people. If you cannot remove, at least reduce the negativity by regulating how much time you give to such a person based on their energy. For example, there might be some people you can only tolerate for an hour a month, some for a day, some for a week. Maybe you even know a 1 minute person. Consider how much time is best for you to spend with them and don't exceed it. Well, not necessarily all negativity is outside. It can also arise from within, like a negative thought, an emotion, or just a feeling. Handle such situations by following a simple triple S formula. First, learn to spot negative thoughts or emotion as they arise. Bring them into your daily awareness. The next step is you stop for a moment and detach it from you. Try to find the root cause of that negativity. Then finally, you should swap the time you spend with these negative environments with something productive. upgrade this time to an action that can be associated with a higher purpose let go of fear author says people notice fear's warning but ignore its guidance if we learn how to recognize what fear can teach us about ourselves and what we value then we can use it as a tool to obtain greater meaning purpose and fulfillment in our lives instead of burying your fear author encourages us to accept our fears be with them then try to find fear patterns this will help you in detaching from the fear and suddenly you will feel you have enormous control over your fear it may still stay with you but it won't be on the driving seat anymore see fear isn't bad it is ensure the survival of human being but today what we mostly experience isn't the physical threat but the emotional fear according to jay shetty the root cause of such fear is an obsession with attachment and control and the cure for this fear is detachment detachment is not that you own nothing but nothing owns you it is acceptable to prefer having things in your life but do not base your identity and self worth on them always remember you do not need these things to be happy then let go of the wrong intentions author says having the wrong intention for the right thing can lead us down the wrong path Hence we must find a right intention behind a reaction. All of our actions have four fundamental motivations: fear, desire, duty, and love. We make choices based on these four intentions. Fear alerts and ignites us, but it's not sustainable. When we operate in fear for a long time, we can't work to the best of our abilities. For example, working in office with a fear of losing job won't produce great results, and desire never satisfies us fully. keeps changing and keep running for the next shiny thing but when we do something out of a sense of duty or love something we choose to do it always brings meaning and a deep sense of fulfillment to life to live intentionally we must dig to the deepest why behind the want this requires pausing to think not only about why we want something but also who we are or need to be to get it and whether being that person appeals to us or not Take a desire you have and ask yourself why you want it. Keep asking until you get to the root intentions. Just be aware of them and recognize that if your reason isn't love, growth or knowledge, the opportunity may fulfill important practical needs. 
but it won't feel emotionally meaningful in the long term because we are most satisfied when we are in the state of progress learning or achievement for example let's say you want to sail around the world and if you ask yourself why and your answer is i'm sailing around the world so i can be free i won't be accountable to anyone i can leave all my responsibilities behind this sailor intends to escape he is driven by fear but if your answer is it was always my father's dream to sail around the world i'm doing it for him in this case your intention is to honor your father and you're motivated by duty and love so you might decide to become a great father or a great husband which will have more positive ripple effects on the other areas of your life as well but if your answer is it will be fun i'll get to see lots of places and prove to myself that i'm a great sailor it sounds like your intention is to gratify yourself and that you are motivated by your desire can you see now even doing the same thing will lead you to be a different person with different values always align your actions with the right intentions if you don't care deeply you can't go all in on the process if you are not doing it for the right reasons you can reach your goals get everything you ever wanted be successful by anyone's term only to discover you will still feel lost and disconnected but if you are in love with the day to day process then you do make an impact then the second stage is grow the fast lane to your growth is serving your dharma author describes living in a dharma is a certain route to fulfillment he sees dharma as the combination of your varna or passion expertise and seva or usefulness to the world author encourages everyone to discover their dharma and then invest your time money and energy in living your dharma Author's definition of dharma is very much similar to the Japanese concept of ikigai. If you want a life which is meaningful and have deep sense of meaning, then body of your work should always reflect your dharma. When you follow your dharma, you feel alive, vibrant and joyful in your daily works. Dharma is the passion in the service of others. Next crucial factor for consistent growth is right routines. Morning routines are crucial for setting your day right. Jay outlines a few simple practices that can impact your morning routine positively. First, don't look at your phone as first thing in the morning. Second, plan your next day before sleeping. If you are going to decide what to eat, what to wear, where to start your work in the morning itself, then you will have no energy for important decisions. Therefore, Jay recommends making simple decisions today about tomorrow. This will help you in starting your morning easily and will help you in making significant decisions when you get into the office. Also, integrate acronym time into your life as a daily routine. Find time to be thankful and show gratitude for all the blessings of life. Find some time for insights during your day. Listen to podcasts, audio books, or read books in your free time. Meditation has more benefits than you could ever think of. It affects every part of your life and contribute in your well-being. Make this a priority. If you cannot do prolonged meditation sessions, try to find two minutes each day to meditate. and exercise merely 15 minutes of exercise each morning will help you to feel energized when you need it here is a golden nugget from author location has energy and time has memory routines aren't just about actions they are also about the locations in which those actions take place there is a reason people study better in libraries and work better in offices each environment from the biggest city to the smallest corner of a room has its own particular energy Every location gives off a different feeling and your dharma thrives or falters in a specific environment. Devote your spaces for a single clear purpose and they will serve you better in fulfilling your dharma and uplifting your productivity. Next step is grow your mind. Jack explains, we are not our mind, but our mind does influence our values. As you feed your body with food, your mind is fed by the movies, music, books, TV shows and people you surround yourselves with the more time you spend around negative sources including troubling news and gossips the more your values are tainted with envy competition and discontent so it's your responsibility to consciously feed your mind with positivity and evaluate your thoughts emotions and feelings on a consistent basis first bring yourself to the place of stillness and silence through meditation and tune out yourself from the opinions expectations and obligations of the world once you are out of this race you will begin to hear yourself silence allow you to start differentiating between outside noise and your voice author gives 
three simple approaches that can help you actively create the space silence and stillness required for reflection together these three approaches will help you in taking decisions like a monk number 1 every day sit for a while and reflect on how the day went and what emotions thoughts fears and values you are going through second every month go to a new place where you have never been to before new places will help you explore yourself with a different environment third get involved in something meaningful to you such as hobby charity or political cause author also described a beautiful principle mudita mudita is a sanskrit word which means taking unselfish joy in the good fortunes of other let's understand if i only find joy in my own success then i'm limiting my joy but if i can be joyful in the successes of my friends and family then my happiness could be limitless or at least 50 60 times This also strengthen your relationship with the people around you. Third stage is give. This stage is about gratitude, relationship and service. We all know the importance of gratitude in one's life. Even modern science is promising people who feel more gratitude tend to feel mentally and physically stronger. And if you ask a monk what he is grateful for, the answer will be everything. Embrace gratitude through daily practices. both internally in how you look at your life and the world around you and through your actions next relationship if you do not know who you are you will not know what you want from a relationship and you send out the wrong signals and attract the wrong people the heart of all challenges in relationships is finding the difference of what we are asking for versus what we need most people ask for things which they don't need because they never figure out what they need for example Most people complain about not getting enough time from their partner. However, just being in the same areas as your partner is not spending time with them. For example, chatting over phone while having dinner is not spending time together. Here are a few simple advices for your better relationships. Try to be present in the moment by avoiding distractions. Second, ensure you are paying full attention to other individuals and what they are saying. Third, have intimate conversations. Put time aside to enjoy the company of your loved ones alone. Intimate conversations are where you both can be yourselves. Not just live with your partner, but grow with your partner. Share your joys, fears, feelings and excitements with each other. Also, do not expect one person to live all the roles for you. For example, a mother's care isn't the same as mentors. One friend might give you great romantic advice while other might motivate you in need. Build your own diverse family. Then last, service. To live in service is the highest way of living. Service is not for others. Service is for you. Service is always the answer. When you are living in service, you don't have time to complain and criticize. Your fears just go away. Your material attachment diminished by itself. Service is the direct path to a meaningful life. No service is big or small and everyone can serve. Find the opportunities to serve wherever possible. To think like a monk, you need to serve like a monk, which is just true service without judging the opportunity and expecting the return. If I have served my dharma by explaining this book well, then please share your thoughts with me in the comment box and also help the world by sharing this wisdom with at least 3 people who can take benefit from this video. Thank you and if you want more such content please subscribe to my channel Reading Leaf because I will keep uploading such mindful content which help you in improving the quality of your life. Thank you.